different methods for creating normals for foliage. Normals on foliage need special treatment. This is because the foliage is made out of flat planes. But the planes actually represent a volume of foliage, so we don't want them to act like planes at all. Two weeks ago we talked about animating the individual leaves so that they don't move like planes. And last week we talked about fading out the planes so you don't see them at glancing angles. This week we're going to talk about adjusting the normals of the planes so that they don't light like planes either. I guess you can see we're going to great lengths to hide the fact that we're using planes for foliage. So our four methods for foliage normals are number one, face normals, number two, bent normals, number three, object pivot normals, and number four, camera normals. We're going to go over how to create each of these types of normals and talk a little bit about the positives and negatives for each. And then at the end, if you stick around, we might just throw in one more way to create foliage normals for good measure. So first we're going to talk about face normals. Before we begin, there are two changes that I want to make that are going to make visualizing our normals a little bit easier. First of all, we have a skylight in our scene that kind of illuminates everything uniformly. And so I'm going to turn this off so that we can tell uh, our directional lights a little bit more clearly. The other thing that I'm going to do is turn off our really nice uh, foliage subsurface scattering translucence at the translucency that we added a couple of weeks ago. So I'm just going to switch over here to our shader and disconnect our subsurface color. And what you're going to see is that uh, the directional light source on our leaves is going to be a lot stronger now and it'll make it easier for us to tell uh, when we've made changes that improve the lighting. So let's talk about face normals. Face normals are what you get by default when you build your foliage from flat planes. The vertex normals point straight in the direction that the planes are facing. And although these normals are correct for the planes, they actually light really poorly. Now on this particular tree mesh, we actually have the second kind of normals that we're going to talk about. We have bent normals. And so in order to simulate what face normals are going to look like, we need to make a couple of changes in the shader. And this is not something that I recommend that you do. I'm just going to use this technique so that I can show you what face normals look like without actually having to go back and change my geometry and re-export my tree. Uh, so this is the bit that we did last week that creates a face normal. And what I'm going to do is this normal is in world space. And so I need to add a vector transform node and I need to transform it from world space to tangent space. So I'm going to come over here and set the source to world and the destination to tangent. And then just like we did with our tangent space normal map here, I need to multiply this normal by our two-sided sine node so that we get the normals flipped in the right direction on the back faces. And now I happen to know that this is going to give us a normal that's inverted. And so I need to actually multiply it by negative one to flip it. And this is going to give us our proper face normal. So let's wire this into our normal socket and take a look at what we get. All right, so right away you can see that our lighting is kind of model-y, like there isn't a definite direction to our lighting. We have some branches on this side that should be the lit side that are actually black. Now one method that I like to use for visualizing my normals is I like to use this menu here and switch to buffer visualizations world normal. And this is going to show us actually what our normal looks like with the vector itself visualized as a color. And I have this sphere over here because this sphere has actually correct normals for the directions of the faces of the sphere. And so we can compare that sphere with our tree here. Can you see how I have these large areas of various different colors that are just kind of chunky looking? Well, that chunkiness is going to end up in our lighting. And that's not what we want. So if you create a tree with flat planes, you need to go in and do something with the normals of the planes. If you just leave them at their default settings, uh, what you're going to end up with is 
this really chunky looking lighting where some of the planes are dark and some of them are light and it just doesn't seem to light correctly at all. So the first type of normals, our face normals, are what we're trying to avoid. Now in this case, like I said, we, we already have bent normals on our tree and I'm just simulating them by using this DDX DDY method to give us explicit face normals, but I'm not recommending that you actually do this. All right, let's talk about bent normals. So if we switch over here to the view of our mesh, you can see that we have uh, our tree mesh here and I have the normals toggled on so they're actually visualized as lines. That's what all these little green lines are. And if we zoom in here, you can see at the ends of the branches, there are these little green lines that are pointed outward in uh, kind of facing away from the center of the tree. This is what we call bent normals. Now the way that you do this in your 3D software that you use to generate your, your tree mesh, uh, you can take a sphere or a hemisphere and tell your software to bake the normals from the hemisphere onto the geometry of your tree. You can transfer those normals over. Now I'm not going to get into exactly how to do that in, in one specific 3D package or another. Uh, you should be able to figure out how to do that and, and maybe I'll link some tutorials for how to do that in the description down below. Um, but this channel isn't really focused on, on how to make a geometry or how to use 3ds Max or Maya and those kinds of things. Um, but I just want you to know that that's how you do it. You transfer the normals from a hemisphere or a sphere uh, onto the normals of your vegetation. And what you end up with is these normals that go from the center of the tree outward. And this is what we call bent normals. So if we switch back over to our shader and we wire in the original normal that we were using, you'll be able to see that this is what our bent normals look like. Okay, so now you can see that a lot of that modeliness that we were getting before is gone and our lighting is a lot more uniform. We're, we're, not, we're not getting those weird patches of black in the middle of our bright areas. Uh, and so that's a significant improvement. If we switch over to our world normals visualization mode, you can also see that things are much smoother there. And if we compare our normals on our tree with the normals on our sphere, you can see that on this part of the tree that's kind of pointing in this direction over here, you, we've got the same normals on the sphere that are pointing in that direction. So if we look at all of our different directions, uh, we're getting approximately the same colors on the tree as we are on the sphere, which is exactly what we're looking for. So this is our second method, bent normals, and you do it by adjusting the normals on the mesh itself in your 3D program. All right, well, let's talk about our third method, which is object pivot normals. And this is a good method to use if you are unable to change the normals on your geometry for some reason, or maybe you want one type of normals for your geometry and another type of normals for your lighting and your shader. What we can do is we can actually generate uh, a normal vector from several different positions. The way that we create a, a vector is we subtract one position for another. So right now I have available to me in the shader the position of the object itself and I also have the position of the pixel that I'm currently rendering. And if I subtract the pixel position from the object position that will give me a vector that goes in the direction leading away from the object out toward the pixel that I'm currently rendering. So let's go ahead and do that. First we need our world position and then we also need our object position. And like I said, if we subtract these two, we end up with a vector that goes from the object position out to the pixel position that we're currently rendering. Now in order to use this for lighting, we first need to normalize it. 
And then just as we did over here, we need to transform it from world space, which is the space we computed it in, to tangent space. And once we have it in tangent space, then we need to uh, flip it when it's on the reverse side of the polygon. So we're gonna multiply it by our two-sided sign. And now let's take a look at what these normals look like. All right, so you can see that we're getting some normals that are kind of similar to the bent normals that we had before. And if you compare them to our sphere over here, you can see that our lighting matches the, the sphere. And so the normals that we're getting are pointed in the proper directions. This is what we want. Now, one thing that you might notice is that these normals are really uniform. They're really smooth. And that may be what you want, but we're actually not using our normal map right now. So the next thing that I want to do is switch back to our shader and show you how to incorporate our normal map. Another thing that I want to emphasize is this method that we've used for our foliage normals doesn't use vertex normals at all. So you might be able to get away with not creating vertex normals and just generating them with this method. Okay. So here we have the, the normal that we created and we've transformed it to tangent space. And now all we need to do is take our normal map and combine our normal map with the normal that we generated. And we can do that with a blend angle correct normals node. So we'll wire our generated normal into the base normal socket and we'll wire our leaf normal into the additional normal socket and then we'll multiply that by our two-sided sign to flip the normals. And we'll save this and take a look at our result. All right, and now you can see that our normals are not quite so uniform. They're actually being tweaked a little bit by the normal map. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I actually did make a mistake. Can you see how these normals are smeared? Well, the reason they're doing that is because we forgot to use uh, the UV coordinates that we're generating uh, up here. So. Here you can see that we have our UV coordinates for our texture sample for our normal map. And we actually need to wire these into the copy of the normal map that we created. And now you can see that fixed the problem for us. No more normal smearing. All right, so this method looks pretty good. Let's talk about method number four. Method number four is actually using the camera vector as our surface normal. So the camera vector is a vector that goes from the from your eye or from the, the camera in the scene toward the object or the, the pixel that's currently being rendered. So in order to use the camera vector for the normal, first we need to add the camera vector, obviously. And then just like we did before, we need to transform that vector because it starts out in world space. We need to transform it into tangent space. And then we also need to flip it on the back sides of the polygons. So now we've taken our camera vector, transformed it into tangent space, flipped it on the back side of the polygons, and we can use this as our normal. So let's pass this in and see what we get from this. All right, now what you can see is that we're using this camera vector as our normal. And so the direction that the foliage is facing is really just the direction that I'm looking at it. So as I rotate around, you can see that it's changing so that the normals are the color on the sphere that I'm, I'm looking at. And this is a really uniform way of creating normals. Uh, it's a really good uh, method for using normals for planes that you want to appear to always face you. So in this case, my tree is made out of planes. And if I want to make it look like those planes are always looking at the camera, then I can use this camera vector method. All right, so let's go over our methods again. The default method that we're using is bent normals because we have geometry with normals that are bent. I, I also use this method down here to create face normals, which is what you would get if you didn't bend the normals in the geometry. Then I use this method here to generate a normal using the object position uh, and subtracting the object position from the current world position. 
And finally, we have this method here using the camera vector as the normal. Now I did promise you one additional method, and what I want to do is create a method that's a little bit of a hybrid between the camera vector method and the object pivot normal method. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my camera vector and I'm going to bring it up here and we're going to use the camera vector method for the branches of our tree and the object pivot normal method for the leaves of the tree. And so if you'll remember, uh, we created a mask using the alpha channel of our diffuse texture and we're using that math to generate the translucency color for our leaves. So this mask is colored white for leaves and black for everything else. So if I come over here and I add a linear interpolate node, I can blend between my camera normal method and my object pivot method using this leaf mask. And then I'm going to take the result of my linear interpolate and, and pass that into my transform vector node. Then I'm going to combine it with my normal map and then I'm going to flip the normals on the back sides of the leaves. And then this is what I'm going to use for my final normal. And so now if we take a look at the normals on our leaves, you can see that the leaves are using the normals from the object pivot method and the branches are using the normals from the camera vector method. And this really helps to separate out the leaves from the branches. Now we've been using this debug view method, but what I want to do now is switch back to our normal lit and show you what the tree looks like uh, with the normals the way that we intended them to be. Now I'm going to turn back on our uh, subsurface scattering, our translucency for our leaves, and I'm also going to come back over here and turn on our skylight again. And so now we get our final result. Today we talked about four different kinds of normals. We talked about face normals, vent normals, object pivot normals, camera normals, and then we even made a hybrid method at the end here using both the object pivot method and the camera normals. So I hope this is useful for you. Now you have a bunch of different methods that you can use for generating normals for, for your foliage. And what I want you to do is uh, I'd encourage you to play around with these different methods and see which of these gives you the best results on your foliage. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Uh, give it a like if you did. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. We'll have another video next week about fading out our foliage when you get too close and also using a, a bit of a dither method uh, for the fade out. Stick around for that one and we'll see you in the next video.